This video is brought to you by SoccerPro.com. Be sure to visit SoccerPro.com for all the latest soccer gear at everyday low prices with no membership fees. Don't forget to use coupon code SR4U at checkout for $10 off a $75 purchase, plus free shipping within the U.S. Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you an unboxing video of a pair of Nike Mercurial Vapor 8s in the brand new retro orange colorway featuring the All Conditions Control ACC from Nike. Get the string bag out of the box here, featuring the retro orange colorway, just like the shoes. Of course, you have the Mercurial logo in orange, as well as the Nike swoosh. It's just your standard string bag that you get with all the top end shoes from Nike. Get that out of the way, then I'll get the shoes out of the box. And what's unique about this particular version of the Nike Mercurial Vapor 8, or this particular colorway, if you will, is that it's actually the third iteration of the Nike Mercurial Vapor 8 in the same production run. And what I mean by that is you don't normally see too many changes or any changes uh, at all in the same run of the shoes. For example, the Nike Mercurial Vapor 7, which was the past version of this shoe, um, there was no differences made from the original colorway to the last colorway. The shoe was exactly the same apart from the colors. But the Nike Mercurial Vapor 8 has only had five releases of colors, but three different versions of the shoe. The original version being the suede finish, which we saw in the bright mango, as well as the white and blue colorway. The second version being the faux leather finish, which we saw in the Clash, Cle Clash Collection Vapor, as well as the Seaweed Volt colorway. And then of course on this fifth colorway, the Retro Orange, we're having this ACC All Conditions Control Upper from Nike, as well as some other subtle tweaks that I'll explain a little bit later. But before I kind of move on, um, being that this is the third version of the Vapor, and being that the Vapor is such a popular line, I'm sure a lot of you are curious as to what the actual differences are um, between all three versions of the Vapor. So if you would like to see a comparison video between all three, go ahead and leave me a comment down below letting me know that you want to see it, or just like the video. The more support that I get um, as far as making that video, the quicker I'll make it. So if I got a really big overwhelming response, I will make it in the next day or two and that'll be up right away because I know a lot of you guys are probably very, very curious. So like I said, just let me know in the comments or leave a like on the video and uh, that comparison video should up, be up very, very soon. But uh, just to talk a little bit about all conditions control, if you're not familiar with this, this is something that we originally saw released or unveiled on the Nike CTR360 Maestri 3 from Nike. And uh, it gained popularity and people really liked it. So Nike kind of introduced it on the rest of their lines. So all of the top end models, for, including the Vapor, like you see here, the Laser 4, as well as the Legend 4, will all feature the ACC upper, which is, uh, if you want me to explain it, it's basically, uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with it. It's kind of difficult to explain, but the idea is to provide um, kind of the same ball feel or the same touch on the ball in dry as well as wet conditions. So when you're playing the ball in the wet, it's going to feel very, very similar to how the ball would feel in dry conditions, almost like a wet conditions control element, if you will. And I have used it, I uh, have used it on the Maestri 3, but that is a different upper altogether from the Mercurial. Um, you're going for a very padded, almost leather-like, Kanga-like material to a super thin, paper-thin synthetic in the Mercurial series. So very curious to see how that actually does perform on this particular type of shoe in wet conditions. Um, as far as all conditions control is concerned, it's not actually a coating like I'm myself, I've been saying it is. Um, that's kind of a big misconception. It's actually something that's permeated in the upper when the upper's in kind of, when they're making the actual synthetic. It's not something that is a coating. It's not something that can rub off. It's not something that you can feel with your hands, but it's actually in the makeup of the Tasian synthetic itself, which is really, really cool because you don't have to worry about it wearing away or anything like that. It's kind of a secretive process by Nike, and that's why nobody really knows what it is or how it actually does work. Um, all they know that is it works to an extent, and I think it's pretty cool that they were able to do such a thing like that. The only difference you're going to see is, of course, the ACC logo here on the tongue, and then the texturing of the upper is a little bit different as well this time around. It's kind of a combination between the suede and faux leather finish from the past two versions of the Vapor. I'll get as close up to the camera as possible. You can see there's almost like a very dense sponge-like texturing on the upper here, but like I said, it has kind of a a soft feel like the suede, but it has kind of like a finish of the leather, uh, faux leather version. So kind of a combination between the two. Very, very interested, 
in interested to see how it's going to feel actually on the ball. And uh, But as far as the thickness of the upper is concerned, it seems to be pretty much that same thickness. Very, very thin as you guys can see. And uh, other than that, the shape exa is exactly the same as well. Another change that we've seen on here that is worth mentioning is this kind of vinyl strip that we see around the forefoot and toe box area of the shoe. Um, durability has been somewhat of a concern for this particular shoe. A lot of people have had issues with the shoe separating perhaps sooner than they would like. I've personally had no issues with any of the versions of the shoe, either the suede version or the faux leather version. And I've worn all of the colorways up to date. And like I said, I had no issues with ripping or anything like that. And while plenty of people have had no issues, there's plenty of people that have had issues. So this is something that's going to address that issue. And you're not going to have any issues with the sole separating from the upper. At least from what I can tell, this seems to be an, uh, a type of material that's going to bond very, very well to the outsole. So you're not going to have any uh, problems with the sole separating. So if you were worried about the Mercurial series or skeptical because you did have a failure, um, you shouldn't have it on this particular model. Um, as far as the colorway is concerned, you have this kind of uh, retro colorway, which we've seen never as a primary color from Nike. but. On this in person it's very very bright if you want to get a better idea as to how the shoe actually does look or even a better idea as to how the texturing does look in person um, go ahead and check the link in the description to the review page on my website and you'll find some up close high quality pictures that'll give you a better idea as to how the shoe actually does look in person and give you a better idea as to how the color actually does look as far as color accuracy is concerned um, it's a kind of like a sky blue teal like color then of course you have this very bright orange swoosh on the inside and outside and of course the heel liner is the bright orange as well. And then your standard um, rainbow pattern thing that you have on all of the heels of the Nike Mercurial line, apart from the Clash collection, which was bare. Um, as far as other changes to the shoe are concerned, there aren't any. You have that same perforated insole, very lightweight, kind of a minimis, minimalistic thing. And then as far as the uh, sole plate and stud pattern is concerned, you have that glass fiber sole plate, which is kind of two different sections of it. You have this darker section which is a double layer of glass fiber to provide a little bit more stiffness and rigidity through the midfoot which is good not only for support but it's also going to allow for a little bit more stiffness when striking the ball giving the shoe more of a solid feel considering how lightweight it is being in that six ounce mark or around that six ounce mark which is very very light. Then of course in the forefoot you have the lighter glass fiber being only because it's one single layer so it's a little bit more flexible and it's going to allow for um, uh, more responsive feel in the forefoot. So you're gonna have that flexibility in the forefoot, then of course that stiff midfoot. So like I said, it has a very solid feel for how lightweight it actually is. As far as the stud pattern is concerned, this is the firm ground stud pattern featuring pretty much six studs. It's somewhat unusual for a firm ground stud pattern. Not something that I would recommend to use on artificial surfaces, be it turf, artificial grass, or even on hard ground, simply because they're a little bit longer and because you're only on six studs essentially, um, they really do require to dig into the ground to work uh, efficiently and to kind of avoid any kind of durability issues. If you're going to be playing on artificial surfaces or hard ground, um, the studs just aren't going to dig in enough and you're not only going to be uncomfortable, but you're also putting yourself at risk uh, of an injury simply because the studs are not going to be digging in and you're putting yourself in kind of unstable situations. Um, with this particular stud pattern. So if you're going to be playing on natural grass on a firm surface where the studs are going to be able to dig into the ground, you're not going to have any issues with uh, kind of stability or putting yourself at risk for an injury. And if you're on proper conditions, this is a stud pattern that really does work well. You can kind of get away with it for using it on soft ground studs, uh, soft ground surfaces as well. Like I said, the studs are a little bit longer. You only have two studs in the back. And essentially in the forefoot, you're standing on these four studs alone. So not too much under your feet, but if you have if you're on a surface where the studs are going to be able to dig in pretty well, you're going to have really good traction. It's probably one of the most unique firm ground stud patterns on the world, on the market. And like I said, with proper conditions, um, it works really, really well. So like I said, very excited to wear this particular shoe. And I will do a brand new full written review for this as well, being that it is a pretty much a all new shoe from Nike, um, the third version of the Mercurial Vapor 8. So that full written review should be up in a couple of weeks or so, guys. I'll get that up as soon as possible. But in the meantime, if you do want to go to that review page on my website, there will be a link in the description. And what you're going to find there is the high quality pictures of this shoe, as well as buy it now links with the best prices online, including some exclusive coupon codes for SR4U fans to get you guys some additional discounts if you are interested in ordering a pair of these particular shoes. 
Um, but that's pretty much it guys. If you have any questions related to the video, go ahead and leave a comment down below. And if you have any questions not related to the video, go ahead and leave that on my Facebook page. There will be a link in the description of that as well. And as always guys, thanks for watching.